everyone good morning or good afternoon probably even good evening i'm nazareno pierdica i am chairing the um, model in uh, remote sensing uh, technical committee of the ieee ieee grss and uh, i have invited uh, professor leung tsang to give this webinar uh, I, I think that Professor Leon Sang is well known in this community, so I do not uh, need to introduce uh, him. Uh, but this is uh, part of a series of uh, webinar with the fundamental aspect uh, in uh, modeling in remote sensing. We had, uh, for instance, another webinar by um, by Zavorotini, uh, Valeri Zavonotti about the uh, SSA2 uh, model uh, for uh, surface scattering. Uh, and uh, I asked to Leung uh, uh, to provide an overview mainly on the aspect related to uh, numerical method uh, or similar thing. So I think I can stop here. Uh, the, the webinar uh, will last for about uh, uh, the presentation for about 40 minutes, around 40 minutes. Uh, and then we will have time for question or discussion till one hour, about one hour. Uh, so Leung, thank you again for being available to give this seminar. And uh, I think we can start. Uh, so please, the floor is yours. Screen, eh? Do you see my screen? Uh, yes, now I can screen. It is not full screen, so you could, uh, okay. You see my full screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, so I'm very happy to give this talk on multiple scattering of waves and computational electromagnetics. Actually, a professor, Ishimaru talked to me a long time ago, is that the multiple scatter of waves property for nature can never be finished. <laughs> so, so don't think that I can finish it. Nobody can finish basically, because number one, Nature is very complicated, right? You look at geometry, like for example, today you talk about every tree is different and every corn is different. And it's very difficult to characterize the geometry of nature. And also Maxwell's equation is complicated, right? Because not only intensities, but also variations of phase and amplitude. So I encourage you to continue this problem because this problem can never be finished. And if you look at commercial software, like look at this pencil here, they can solve this pencil very correctly because it's a small geometry and very well defined geometry, unlike nature, you can solve it in any commercial software. But the multiple scale of waves in nature, I don't think it takes years and years to finish even after I go away. But however, because of time today, I will just quickly uh, do update. So the first two topics is update, uh, dense media, volume scattering in terrestrial snow, C-band, X-band, and KU-band. Rough soil surface scattering, L-band, C-band, X-band, and KU-band. And the focus of this seminar webinar is on our recent work, the effects of vegetation and forest at P-band, L-band, S-band, and C-band. We started with the hybrid method in 2017 and computations were performed in high performance computing. But recently, since last year, we are excited because we developed the fast hybrid method and the simulations can now be performed in standard laptop. So I want to quickly remind you the difference between two multiple scattering. The multiple scattering of radial transfer equation, as you see on the left, is given by the equation down here at the bottom, and it deals with intensities. But full wave simulations, Maxwell's equations, it deal with complex fields, phase and amplitude. So quickly go through the dense media recent work. Uh, one of our uh, uh, problems that we are solving is a snow volume scattering at C-band, the aggregates of cluster of ice grains that give a cross polarization. Now in our simulation, we first computer generate uh, the dense media using by continuous medium. Now you see two pictures at the bottom. Both have the same mean grain size, one millimeter. But then on the right, 
the B is uh, moderate, means no aggregates. And then on the left, you see the aggregation B upon four. So you compare the left and right, they have the same mean brain size, but their aggregates on the left and their clusters on the left. Now, the simulation method consists of two parts. So the first approach is DMLT. What does DMLT stand for? That means you combine full wave simulations with wave transfer. That means that using uh, the bicornice medium, we generate a volume, say 6.4 centimeter cube. It will contain hundreds of aggregates. And then you solve Maxwell's equations. In this case, we use the DDA method to calculate the phase matrix. Okay. So having a large number of aggregates, hundreds of them, you solve Maxwell's equation and you get the phase matrix on the right, the P11, the cross copo, and the red line P12, P21 is the cross polarization. Now, after you get the phase matrix for full wave simulations, then you combine with radial transfer equation. Right? You have this radial transfer equation and you can solve it by various methods. Uh, one method is just iteration with iteration and you get the usual radial transfer equation. And this method is very good because when you iterate, you can look at first order scattering, second order scattering, third order scattering, and so forth. But actually, we can go beyond. Uh, one of my students did it a few years ago, Xu Wen Tang. So what he did is that in addition to iteration, you can add the backstrand enhancement, uh, which is a complicated subject I showed the figure. Uh, for those who are familiar with back enhancement, they understand it. You can add the backstrand, backstrand enhancement as you iterate. So on the, uh, on the figure here, the color figure here, decompose the scattering into the blue line, first order scattering, the red, second order scattering, uh, yellow, the third order scattering, so on and so forth. And you can see that uh, the co polarization VV and HH are mostly come from first order scattering. But then second order scattering, post pole has a lot. And then the enhancement means you get enhancement. Backscatter enhancement. And you need to look at the result on the left, which is plotting the backscatter as function of snow depth. You can see that the cost group can be very high as you using aggregates. And the reason we are interested in this problem is that because uh, in the uh, Evans work in 2019, he showed that there's large cost polarization for Sentinel. So we use the model and look at the backscattering as a function of snow depth using C-band Sentinel data. And you can see that we indeed get very large cross pole. So the co pole cross pole ratio is only at dB and it's good agreement with the Sentinel-1 data. Now this is the first method. Combine uh, full wave simulations to get a phase match and then wave transfer equation to, mount, to get a multiple scattering. But then one can also eliminate uh, the wave transfer part because with the powerful computer, in days, you can actually solve a full wave simulations. So here we look at a uh, KU band, uh, 1.5 centimeter uh, wavelength. And then you look at a large volume of 8.6 lambda times 6.6 lambda times 5.8 lambda. And you can solve more than 1 million discretization to solve the full scattering problem. And this is full wave simulations with OA transfer. And on the right, we plot a DMLT and full wave simulations for both VV and HH as a function of snow depth. Now we go to the second topic, which is also very important work uh, that we have continued to study, which is rough soil surface scattering, which is our recent work. And our focus recent year is to go to a larger KH. What does that mean? We want to look at C-band, X-band, and KU-band. The, the picture at the top shows a retrieval of the rough surface armor's height for the L-band data, from L-band data snap data. And, and Sepp Kim of JPL did this, and he showed that the rough surface armor height is from about one centimeter to even five centimeters, six ten centimeter in, uh, in, um, in mountainous region. Now they will go beyond uh, the L-band because a lot of work on rough surface is focusing on L-band. And if you look at L-band, the rough surface height KH, is only 1.5. K is the wave number and H is armor's height. So if you can solve KH up to 1.5, you basically finish the L-band simulations, although you can continue to study it. But then if you go to S-band, C-band, X-band, low KU-band, high KU-band, 
the KH quickly increase up to 21. So you really have to put in more computation uh, to get the KU band above surface scattering or X band. Now, one question is a very interesting question. A lot of people studying it, Professor Kun San Chen and DC and us, is what is the roughness spectrum? Now, if you go back to the original paper by O. Sarabandier and Ulabi, they said that if you look at small IMS height, say up to one or two centimeter, it's exponential. And that is why for L band rough surface scattering, people keep on using exponential. But once you include large IMS height, larger roughness, and actually it says somewhere in the paper that it actually make a transition between exponential and Gaussian. And that is why when we solve rough surface problem, we use a rough surface geometry of combination of F1 and F2, okay? A basically an exponential plus a Gaussian. Uh, and we, for this large armless high case, we are using a volume integral equation approach. So if you see the rough soil surface, you put a boundary between the upper maximum of the height and the minimum of the height, and you have the region in between, and you discretize that region in between and use a volume integral equation approach. And then there's quite interesting results that we see. So we do a two scale roughness, F1 and F2 at the top and the parameters, two rough surface dial. And then we calculate the rough surface as a backscatter as a function of frequency on the left, as a function of RMSI on the right. And it is quite interesting because if you plot the uh, rough surface scatter as a function of frequency, you see this increase with frequency. That's why everybody says, oh, if you increase frequency, you have increase in scattering. But that's not true. As you go to larger arm frequency, actually saturate. So if you look at, at 10 gigahertz or 20 gigahertz, it saturates about minus a gigahertz and 10, uh, minus, uh, 10 8 dB and minus 10 dB. So actually, as you go to higher frequency, it approaches the geometric optics limit that it better off. And as you plot against uh, uh, armless height, you get the same thing is that it will saturate and expand at about three centimeter armless height and the threshold is about also about minus eight dB. And also we go forward and come back compare with the large height case for the Eulabis data, which is expand and the KH is 6.06. .06, and this is plotted as a function of instance angle and it matches the data quite well. And again, at 40 degrees in the angle, the rough surface scale is our minus eight dB. As a matter of fact, this kind of saturation is expected because as you increase frequency or increase IMS height, scattering cannot continue to increase because it will violate energy conservation because emissivity is minus scattering. If scattering keep on increasing, your emissivity will become negative. So after finishing these two topic of um, of uh, rough surface scattering and dense media. Now we go to the uh, ma main topic, which is the effects of vegetation field and forest. We first developed uh, in 2017 with my PhD student Hong using a hybrid method and then Gu also finished in 2022. And we used T matrix for single pine tree and then 40 lakhs multiple scattering. The method is efficient, but nevertheless, we have to use high performance computing which is time consuming for applications because applications people want to have lookup table for, 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 for to apply to their problem. So in 2022, we developed the fast hybrid method. It reduced CPU and memory. And now as I show our simulations are actually performed on standard laptops and desktops. And I will show results of vegetation field, L band, S band and C band, and then forest, for P band, three for tree height up to 16 meters, and then L band for results for tree up to eight meters, and then prelim results for 30 meters height. And the bottleneck of this method is how high you can do in a field of vegetation of hundreds of plants and forests and hundreds of trees. And at this moment, basically we can carry up to about 40 wavelengths, 40 wavelengths in height. That means eight meters at L band. So quickly, this problem has been solved in the, since the 1980s using the radial transfer equation. 
And you can see that there's assumptions as I said earlier. The rate transfer equation assumes uniformly random position of scatterers. It assumes simple shaped cylinders and this, and they are disconnected. And you also use far field interactions. But then if you look at a picture on the right, if you look at the crops of crops, trees with gaps, part and tree has structures. So it doesn't obey assumptions of radial transfer. So this gives you more details of comparison between the previous method of RT and the present simulation that we did. RT still with intensities, but multiple scattering of waves still with waves of complex amplitudes. And on the left, uh, RT deal with simple shapes of cylinders and disk, and they are randomly and uniformly positioned. But on the right, actually, we now do realistic 3D objects of trees, horns, widths, and we also put in gaps in the field. RT deal with intensities and phase matrix, but complex field Maxwell's equations deal with T matrix and Green's functions. So this is how the problem is done. There's two parts. One is that one, you, 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 you use a single width plant and you construct the T matrix of the bi static scattering complex amplitude. And you do the wave multiple scattering using the 40 lex wave multiple scattering equations. Now, how do we extract T matrix? Now, T matrix is complex amplitudes. It relates scattered waves to instant waves. But after it's done, you can use a T matrix with the spherical wave expansion for near field, intermediate, and far field interactions. And unlike RT, is only far field. Now we use commercial software to calculate the T matrix. How we do it? You have commercial software. We have HFSS and FACO. And what you do is you put a family of excitation fields, right? Like instant waves or even using point source. You have a family of excitation coefficients, which is AE. And then you calculate the, uh, the matrix of uh, scattered field matrix. The columns are the corresponding scattered waves. And the T matrix is just the column, the matrix of scattered amplitudes times the inverse of the instant field coefficients, and you get the T matrix. And it's very convenient because complex, uh, commercial software can solve realistic trees, realistic cons. You can just, you don't need to, no longer need to use the circular cylinders or the disk, you can use actually the actual geometry. As a matter of fact, if you can draw the tree, commercial software can solve it to get a T matrix. But you need to use this technique of extraction, multiplying AS by AE minus inverse. Now then, after you get the T matrix, you use 40 lux multiple scattering equations. That means that the instant wave on a, a plant queue is equal uh, the, the instant wave on a plant queue is equal to the plane wave incidence plus scattered wave from all other particles. It's very actually simple intuitively. And it's given by this equation in vector cylindrical wave expansions. And this is vector cylindrical wave expansion is actually quite new because in the past when we do full wave, people all, always use spherical waves. But this is not good for vegetation because if you look at vegetation, if you look at each tree as an object, each plant as an object, it's better to treat using cylindrical waves of outgoing wave from each tree and each plant. And then you use the Green's theorem, which in this case becomes a translation addition theorem, which expresses the scattered wave from plan P to instant wave on plan Q. And this is translation addition theorem, which is basically the Green's function. And then you, the relation between the scattered wave and the instant wave is the T matrix. Now, the, how do we know the method is correct? And this is done by my student Gu some years ago, a few years ago, because we can find the case first nine plants. Now, if you have nine plants, you can run HFSS, although it takes a lot of time, but you can do it with nine plants. And then we use both methods, the HFSS and our hybrid method. And this shows the field at the bottom of the nine plants, and they are in good agreement showing that our methods are accurate and give the same results of HFS for nine plants. And this is quite interesting because if you solve RT for many, many years, you only get the average intensity, right? The backscatter, whatever. But if you use soft uh, full wave simulation, you can actually plot the electric field 
everywhere, very clear everywhere. And that gives you additional physical insight of the wave interaction process and not just a full uh, the intensities. In this case, we use C band, uh, 6.9 gigahertz, it's four centimeter. So the height is about three or four wavelengths. So as I say, the bottleneck of this kind of simulation is how tall can you do, right? How tall can you do in terms of wavelength? Now, then you ask us how many plants you need to simulate to simulate the multiple scattering. Now, nine plants is not good enough. If you look on the left, if you shine a microwave nine plants, oh, there's a lot of empty space on the left, on the outside the nine plants. You get a lot of transmission and you can show that if you only use nine plants in your simulations, you get heavy total transmission equal to very high. But in full machine, in, uh, into actual assembly geometry, you need say a hundred plants. So typically we use about hundred plants or hundred trees. So you shine a plane wave on these 100 trees and you solve the full multiple scattering using hybrid method. And after you solve the full multiple scattering, your test area or reception area is at the center. And this is very intuitive. If you are in the center tree or center plant or the center tree or nine plants, you look around it, you feel that you are in a even number of plants, right? As you said, if, if you are in the forest, around us, uh, hundreds of plants, you feel that you are infinity. That's why you need a large number of plants. I will show, I will show you how many plants you use and how many uh, trees you use. So using these 169 widths, we actually calculate the L-band transmission. And again, in full wave simulations, we can distinguish between the gap area and under the inner region under the plant. So we accept the area, and this is plotting the transmission as a function of reception area. As you increase the reception area, the curves will, will become uh, approach, a, a, a approach convergent. And you can see that the blue curve is in the inner region, transmission is low. And in the up, upper region, the gap region is high transmission. And when you take the overall weighted average, you get the total transmission, which approaches about 0.8 for this case of 169 wheat at, uh, at uh, 169 wheat plants to calculate transmission. Now, how much difference do we have with LTE? And this shows comparison. As you plot the transmission as a function of VWC, and from about uh, 0.5 to 2.5, at 0.5, transmission is very high, right? About every point is about 0.9. But as you increase in VWC, it make large difference. So at the upper end of 2.5 VWC, the difference is almost 2.5, three times between RT and hybrid method. So in general, all our simulations to the transmission for the full wave is larger to much larger than that of the radius transfer model. But of course, we need to do a lot more simulations and that's why we want to use a faster method. Now, in addition to L-band, there is interest in using S-band, which is also nicer, and C-band uh, Sentinel. And this is using a hybrid method. So uh, for L and S-band, we use 169 plants. And then for C-band, we use 81 plants. But this was the hybrid method. Recently, we can do much more number of plants as I will discuss later. But using 169 plants, 81 plants, we show the transmission on the right, comparing LTE and hybrid method. Again, hybrid method, full wave shows much larger transmission. And also another interesting thing is that the C-band transmission is comparable to S-band, saying that some sort of geometric optics, because as we know, as geometric optics set in, the frequency dependence becomes weakened. And that is never obvious at L-band because L-band has very strong frequency dependence and size dependence. But as you go to higher frequency, it becomes less frequency dependent. And the full wave simulations uh, give you uh, this difference with LTE. And then we also do trees, right? Because the, remember that in the original SMAP, um, SMAP uh, 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 goal is to do uh, five kilograms per meter square. But the extent that SMAP mission, uh, you want to go to high, VWC as high as 20. 
So we start to do forest. As a matter of fact, the reason a uh, uh, few campaign of uh, SMAP is to do forest. So in this case, we did about 15 to 25 trees. Uh, that's using a hybrid method at L band, eight meter tall trees. And then we showed the transmission, say 20 trees. And it's about 30% to 50% higher than uh, uh, radio transfer. This plus the transmission as a function of tree height and as a function of tree density. But since last year, we start to change direction. Why? Because although the hybrid method is efficient, more efficient, much more efficient than the commercial software, but it's still not fast enough because in micro remote sensing, you want to create a huge lookup table because as I said earlier, earth science problem can never finish because there's so much variability in nature, in every corn is different, soil is different, trees are different. So you want to have a high fast method to in order to have the goal of preparing a lookup table. So in recently, since the new student John joined, we developed the fast hybrid method and we are able to use triple FFT for 4D lag separations. And that save CPU time and memory. And now we can do the simulations on standard laptops and desktops. And the goal is to repair lookup table for practitioners. So let's re-examine the 4D lag equation. It gives summation of over the plants from plant P scattering onto plant Q. It shows the scattered wave from plant P to plant Q, summation over all the plant P, and use a translation addition theorem. So now let's look at the geometry. The plant itself are not periodic, right? So you have the plant here at those blue circles. However, it will be close to a periodic grid, right? A periodic grid. Now, one thing good about team matrix is once you get a team matrix of a plant, you can rotate the plant. You can displace the plant. You don't change the team matrix. You can rotate the team matrix. So that's the convenience of using the team matrix because you have many different cons. You create all the team matrix and then you put in a library. You can pull out the, the team matrix of a corn, this kind of corn, this kind of soybean, and you can put it together and you can rotate them. And then you put all these 100 wheat right, in a field and you can rotate and you can displace. Now, how do we do? Uh, what we do is that we use cylindrical waves. Uh, the plants are position P and Q. It's not periodic. So you first translate to a periodic point of P0. And then you look at scattering from P0 to Q0, both periodic. And then you translate back to the Q, Q point. Okay, so you do two translations and one FFT. So this is what we had here. So first you move from the position P for the plant P to a, to a periodic point of P0, and you require N steps of P multiplication, only N because you only have N plants. And then you do scattering for P0, N P0 to N Q superpositions, and these are periodic you can use FFT, okay? It becomes N not N steps. And afterwards you move back from Q, Q0 to Q, and that's require N steps because you only have N plants. So this reduces the CPU from N squared to N not N plus two N, and the memory from N squared to N, as I, I will show you later, this method really saves a lot of memory because the accurate bottleneck is not much CPU, because if you, you can wait, but the memory is really a huge demand. And this method really speed up safe on the memory requirement. Now we did two order of FFT, spatial FFT, but our method is not 3D FFT. 3D FFT means that you do X, Y, Z, V coordinates, but we only do 2D FFT for the spatial part. And the third part is a sort of somewhat fortunate because you look at scattered wave from cylindrical wave and to instant wave M, right? M is the order of cylindrical wave, N is the order of cylindrical wave or scatter wave. And the coupling in a transition theorem is M minus N. It's only the order difference, not the absolute value of the index. 
when you have a coupling, there's only the order difference, index difference, you can also use FFT. So one to order of FFT perform on the order difference. Uh, that is why we are not using 3D FFT. We are using two dimensional spatial FFT plus one order of all the difference of zero waves. And this means a triple FFT method. Now let's show the comparison. So this is so sure the FFT reduces N squared to N log N and memory from N squared to N and 100 coins and many number of trees. And on the right is a CPU and memory. Now make sure you have, the left column is 100 coin plus, okay? HFS is commercial software using nine coins. But well, HFS, we haven't done more than nine coins. But fast hybrid method, we usually can do easily do 100 coins. Now for FHM, we use standard laptop. HFSS, we use high PC, high power computing. And the CPU are described. And for FHM, we use six cores on our laptop. HFSS here, HPC, 18 cores. And even for 100 cons versus nine cons, FHM only requires six minutes. Our HFS or nine cons already require 87 minutes. So we're, we're happy that using simulation of 100 cons, we only require six CPU minutes on a standard laptop. And even more good is that the memory requirement is tremendous. For HFSS, we need to use 140 gigabytes for nine cons. But for FX of 100 cons, 100 cons, we use only 0.5 gigabytes, 0.5 gigabytes on a standard laptop. So actually we can easily, easily done. So once you have all the T matrix assembled uh, 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 in a library, you can just pull them out and do this 100 con and simulation using six minutes and 0.55 gigabyte of RAM. Now then we do what we need to do trees. And we are interested in P-band trees because of the biomass mission. And also because of the refractometry using to P-band, if you talk to a Simon, you of JPL, he is interested in using P-band for refractometry. So we use 121 trees and 60 meter tall high, right? And we are interested, he asked us to show the, uh, the change of transmission from the summer to winter. Because in the summer, the direct constant of three is 20, in the winter is three. So now we, how do we know it's correct? So again, we always do a lot of validation comparing with commercial software. So we use FACO for nine trees, between FACO and FHM. On the left picture is the FACO for nine trees, and on the right picture is the FHM for nine trees, and they are in good agreement. Now for nine trees, uh, FACO is quite good. It requires 263 seconds, and FHM is faster by 1.4 times. And the memory is, as I said, is much less, much less. If you use FACO, you need high performance computer, 101 gigabyte, but using FHM, you only need half a gigabyte and 200 times less memory. And it can be done on standard laptop. But FHM, can, more, can do more than nine trees. So we did 121 trees, 60 meter tall, and showed the field at the bottom of the 121 trees for various direct constant of the trees, right? You can show the field pattern, right? If you do RT, you can never show the field pattern, but if you full wave, you can show the field pattern at the bottom of the trees for the various direct constant, and you can have very nicely picture looking at um, how the tree uh, yield field pattern changes as you do the simulations due to various changes in parameters. And this shows the transmission from winter to summer. So the winter is very high, 0.95, and the summer is up to uh, 0.7, down to 0.7 point transmission. And the right is what the assignment is interested in, correlation for different uh, constant okay. for the P-band refractometry. Now, how do we compare memory and CPU, right? And this is our projection. So if you look at this comparison, HFSS, we haven't done more than nine compounds. I'm sure if you have very really high powerful HPC, you can do maybe 25 compounds, okay? But beyond that, the L-band is become difficult if you do more than 25. 
Now you look at this is plotting the CPU and memory as a fun for lock and lock scale, right? So if you look at HFS, it's huge, tremendous CPU and tremendous memory. And if you do the hybrid method, it's good in CPU, but the memory increased very fast. But if you do FHM, right now we are constantly less than one gigabyte of RAM required, even for 100 corn plants. So FHM can solve 100 plants and we are working on 100, 100 trees uh, at this moment. Now this shows the corn, okay, the 100 corn. So for 100 corns, we can still run FACO because FACO is quite efficient, although it takes a lot of CPU and memory. But we show 100 corn plants at the bottom of 100 corn plants. FACO on the left, which is a fast multiple method and FHM on the right. And it has very good agreement between FACO and FHM. And the top picture shows that once you have the T matrix of corn, you can displace them, you can randomly shuffle them, you can rotate them to give different corns, okay? But it's good agreement between FACO and FHM, showing that the method is fast and also accurate, even for 100 corns with commercial software. Now, this is the major challenge for the SMAP extended mission. We want to use L-band for us. So, uh, so we start to use this FHM recently for 25 trees. And this is the tree structure uh, for each tree. It has one trunk, eight meter tall, 25 centimeter diameter, one trunk, 18 primary branches, four centimeter in radius, and then one meter length. And secondary branches is 0.3 meter in length, one centimeter in diameter, and 108 secondary branches. And we were able to finish these 25 trees quite fast using the fast hybrid method. Now this compare the hybrid method and the fast hybrid method. And the hybrid method is CPU will increase tremendously as you increase the number of trees. And then FHM, we project, we can do 100 trees, although my student is doing it now. Now for 25 trees, it's still about nine times faster than the previous hybrid method. And the memory requirement is comparable. Once we go to, uh, 100 trees, uh, there's no comparison. We, have, we believe, uh, we are convinced that the fast hybrid member is very fast and be able to do 100 trees for eight meter tall trees. Now, in addition to solving transmission, uh, because if you want to do emissivity, you have to calculate by static. And then if you want to do backscattering uh, in NISA, NISA, you have to do backscattering. So what we do is that uh, for the, now we move forward to do the bicycle scattering. For bicycle scattering, after you solving the multiple scattering equations, you find the final scatter field coefficient obtained, and then you use far field to find the, uh, to find the bicycle scattering. And this is what we did. And, and then again, my student is very careful. I advise him every time you do something, you have to check with commercial software. So here he did 25 trees and, um, and then compare with FACO. Uh, FACO, you can do 25 trees at eight meter top, but uh, extensive CPU and, and memory. And we get on the right is FHM results. Uh, oh no, so the, two, uh, the red curve is uh, FHM, the dotted curve is FACO. The core pool on the left, the core pool on the right. And it has very good comparison of FACO now because the disagreement is on the minimum now, right? Because you know that when you do full wave simulations, you can never match zero. <laughs> zero is impossible because, because it's complete destructive interference. You can never reproduce exactly zero because you shift the geometry a little bit, the zero will shift as you probably know. But the maximum you can always capture. So the maximum agree very well, all the trends agree very well, but the now you can never match. So removing the nows, you can see that we have very good agreement with FACO. And the good thing about the multiple scattering method, you can iterate one order at a time. And that's why I always say that iterative is good because you can do first order, second order, third order, and fourth order. So after fourth order multiple scattering, we are very good in FACO, right? But FACO, you don't know all order. They just solve, solve the whole thing. <laughs> that's the good thing about multiple scattering approaches because you can do first order, second order, third order, fourth order, you can, examine the contribution each order rather than just a black box you run the full wave and that kind of stuff okay but we are convinced that we are having the right track and get the correct answers 
Now this is the conclusion summary. So basically, how we can do, always ask how high we can do. At this moment, we can do 40 wavelengths high. Then how many trees we need to use? And our rule of thumb now is the natural area is 1.5 times the height, okay? So if you have 40 wavelengths high, you have to do 60 wavelengths on the lateral dimension. And that we usually can put in 100, 100 trees, 100 compounds. So in a simulation, we can do 40 wavelengths height and 60 wavelengths by 60 wavelengths. But 40 wavelengths go a long way because if you look at P-band, the, the wavelength by meter, you can do 40 meters. That means the crop field can easily be done using lookup table. And even forest can be done because forest trees is at most 40 meters. But L band, 40 wavelengths means eight meters. Crop field can be done. And we are trying to move up to 100 wavelengths high, 200 meters tall trees. S band, four meters. It can be done because the highest corn is about three, two or four, five meters. It can be done even for corn, right? for fully grown corn. For C band, also can be done. 2.2 meters crop field can be done, but trees still need some time. Now we also try to do X band. So X band at 40 wavelengths is 1.25 meters, and for uh, corn, uh, corn less than 1.25 meters, it can be done. But we need some time <laughs> to run all these cases to prepare lookup table. And then at extended mission, which is we are very important for the snap mission, our goal is to finish 30 meter tree. 40 trees in the, in the forest, 30 meter tall height by this summer. Actually, we have some, some preliminary results, but we don't show it this today. But hopefully in the summer we can show it, maybe at uh, IGAS. And then by next year, 2024, we hope we can do 20 meter tall trees, right? And the VWC is extended because the originally map threshold, upper threshold is five kilograms. But the extended mission is going up to 20 kilograms per square meter for VWC. And the conclusion, as I said in the beginning, multiple scattering of waste by in earth science can never be finished. Now for laboratory experiments, even for photonic crystal, you, you can finish <laughs> because it's periodic and the geometry is well characterized. But nature is hard to characterize, even the geometry. And then with Maxwell's equation, complex amplitudes and phase variations, it will take a, many years to finish. So I encourage young people to continue uh, in this very exciting topic. And for dense media scattering, our work is C-band cost for copo ratio, and also looking at whether backscatter enhancement to be included in satellite analysis. So far, it's only basic study not included in satellite analysis. For rough soil surface scattering, we want to move up to KH25. And the soil roughness spectrum is very interesting because people in the past, less than one centimeter, two centimeter, you say exponential. But it's not exponential when you go beyond. So it's very interesting to look at roughness spectrum. For vegetation forests, we are very encouraged by FHM. It speed up multiple scattering solutions of waves. And vegetation field, we want to prepare lookup table for LSC and X band. For L band, we want to push up to 25 meters with 100 trees. And this is our recent references. Uh, in addition to publishing in TGAS, GRSS journals also published in antennas, propagation, and microwave free and techniques because the, the, our methods are very heavily computational electromagnetics. Uh, so that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. And we, uh, we are open to Q&A. Yeah. Thank you very much, Leung. Uh, very interesting. Uh, not easy, I have to say, but uh, <laughs> I hope uh, that uh, in any case, uh, it was uh, interesting for everyone. So uh, now it is uh, open for discussion. And uh, if there are questions or comments uh, about your presentation, of course, the audience uh, can uh, talk. I think you have just to unmute yourself. Oh, OK. Yes, Mauro, this is James Campbell. I have hi, a... hi, hi, James. Hi there. Um, uh, so my question is on the applica applicability of the fast hybrid method to 
closed canopies versus open canopies is mm -hmm. there some uh, constraint for the separation of the trees or the corn or the wheat okay uh basically right now we have tested for very close because when you have two t matrix um once you put a T matrix, you will put your vectors in the wave expansion. It can be for near field, far field, intermediate field. But if we is extremely close, then we have to use uh, one of my students trying to include uh, the T matrix, the, the, the waves of the T matrix spectrum. So basically, if you use vector residual waves, uh, you have you have a effervescent waves components. But for all the simulation we do, because like we always compare with uh, FHM, I mean, not, not, not FACO. So all the simulation we do, even with pie codes, it compare quite well. But the next phase, that my student is working on using, um, trying to use effervescent waves with point sources uh, for the excitation. So once that uh, we we have the effervescent waves uh, uh, completed, we can do it extremely close. Yeah. Okay. But then the important thing is that the important thing is that you can never do even number, right? The nature is a sort of infinity. But our 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 hypothesis is that. If you have a large area, 100 trees or 200 trees, you solve the full multiple scattering. And after you solve full multiple scattering, you go to the center part, you will experience like a you know, even number of trees, right? Because that's like if you are sitting in the middle of several hundred people, right? You look around and you feel that you are among, in, in, among infinite number. Okay, yeah. So the, and it is a really important, how do you approximate a very huge area, of course, in the forest, you can have thousands of trees, I, I mean, right? But as you know, right, in the, both effectometry and in, um, and in backscattering, and in receiving, you're always looking at backscattering per unit cross section, gamma, right? <laughs> so you just normalize by dividing by the area. And always, the micro simulation is also very interesting because you can check, you can keep on increasing the area until convergence. The numerical method, you can continue to check convergence by changing the numerical parameters, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Leong, I, I have also a question that is mainly to, to check if I have understood the, the approach and especially the hybrid method. Uh -huh. uh, you compute the T matrix of a single plant uh, from a commercial software. Yes. And uh, then that means that you have uh, a single T matrix uh, for every tree of every plant of your uh, scenario. Uh, so the the uh, the, qu the question is uh, uh, the lookup table uh, that you are going to produce uh, could be in some way uh, affected by the type of uh, trees or type of uh, corn plant uh, that may change from one place uh, one place to another because you may we may have different uh, type of corn plants. Uh, in Europe or in uh, United States, I don't know. So, uh, in order to create uh, this lookup table, uh, are you creating different lookup table for different types of uh, plants or different, uh, let's say, geographical area? Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting question. As I uh, earlier, right? Nature you can never characterize. You look at every corn. <laughs> you go to the field. I, Recently, yeah, I yeah. Do, you can do, look into every corn. <laughs> what you do here is that you set up a lookup table. Say, even in the field, when you go to the field, you will cut 10 corns, right? If you do field experiment, and then you you, 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 you just, right? So in other words, if you go to the field experiment, you cut 10 corns, right? We can get the team matrix for that 10 corns, right? One for each corn. And then after you get the 10 team matrix for 10 corns, you can put them up randomly in the, in your domain, and then you can rotate them. So, as a matter of fact, to, to work with a few experiments, you just work with them. And no matter, I will say that even for corn, you can just cut ten corns <laughs> or twenty. But to create twenty T matrix, you can do it that using commercial software. Yeah, yeah. And the forest, the same thing. I mean, how many trees you cut, right? <laughs> Maybe five, ten trees. But I think that we have enough to characterize what what you want to do is to examine the major effect, right? Because nature is so complicated. You can never finish nature because nature, every tree is different. You want, what you want to do is to study what are the key effects, what are the key differences. And in this case, 
the interesting thing is that what is the key contribution due to gaps, right? What is the key difference between uh, up radio transfer and uh, full wave, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other question for Leung from the audience? Excuse me, sir. Hi, I, I cannot hear you. Can you speak up, please? Yeah. Uh, am I audible, sir? Am I audible? Uh, yes, you're audible. Yes, yeah. quite very, very low, but if you can speak, at least I, I have some difficulty and I don't know if Leunga uh, can hear you. I can hear you, but somehow I can, okay. I, you don't understand what you talk about. If you, if you, if you, uh, if you cannot talk, well, we can chat, right? You can put in chat box, right? I think you can put in chat, yeah. Chat, yeah, welcome yeah. to the chat box, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I have, uh, no, good morning, professors. I have multiple questions. Like, uh, number one is, uh, what is the best software to model these geometries? Number uh, one. Right now, uh, we are, we actually work with FACO. Uh, we, they will help you our work. <laughs> they give us a full version, right? So if FACO, they provide a full version. If you don't, the, the full version usually charge a lot for, for industries, right? Or, 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 or laboratories, but for, they give us a full version uh, because they, they like our work. So uh, vehicle for us is the best at this moment because the fast multiple method, it turns out that you can do um, 100 coins but, as I showed earlier. Yeah, yeah. For, but, but then but, at this moment, we use the fast multiple method, FHM, to get the team mix of one tree, one coin, and then we also make com comparison for a small number of coins, right? So we want to test the accuracy. So we use the commercial software for both uh, extraction of T matrix as well as a benchmark comparison for limited number of cons, limited number of trees. Yeah. But uh, FACO doesn't uh, uh, model uh, rough surface, right? Um, we are doing it now. Yeah, we are we are doing it now. Rough surface. Yeah. So, but rough surface in the past we have used the uh, uh, SMCG method for fast solver of rough surface. Right, and also we have uh, recently we are also using the discrete half phase dialectic green some sort of discrete polynomial equation, and there is a whole sort of method, right? But also is also a tough problem. That's why we are going back to rough surface and try to push up KH, yeah, to top twenty five. Yeah. And, and the question is like you have uh, shown the results for um, uh, scattering from corn fields, white fields, etc., from uh, one tree to multiple trees. Uh, uh, that is fine. Uh, is it the scattering from only the trees or in the background, the medium is also considered? I mean, the so we soil agree. is... We are, we, are, yeah, we are trying to... Right now, we are just, just uh, doing the, the tree effect. So, because the, what happened here is that in the past, what we did is that we always do decomposition. So, we use a rough surface simulation to get rough surface. And then we have the tree effect. And if you do uh, uh, like uh, backscattering or L-band or S-band, you always use the three term decomposition, the volume scattering, the double bounce, and, and the rough surface. You can uh, uh, coherently or incoherent combine. But to do full wave simulations, combining both the background and the vegetation volume uh, is a challenge. We, we try to do it. But I think that the, the key point is that what, what do you want? What, how much difference, okay? So the, the key point when you do all these full-wave simulations, the bottom line is how much difference do you have from the classical approach, right? So suppose I finish the volume scattering by trees and I, I combine the rough surface separately to get the free term. You get a re good result, you get result already. And then you do the full wave simulation, all the things together. <laughs> now, but you have asked yourself the question, if you do a complete full wave, that's why of the everything together, how much difference? You have to ask yourself the question. Are there major differences? What are the physical reasons for those major differences? And when we do the full wave simulation for trees, our question was that, how much difference when there are gaps? Because if you do RTE, there are no gaps, right? All the, all the cylinders and, 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 and disks are uniformly random distributed. So we want to find out using full wave volume scattering, how much difference in a gap effect. I think you need to have purpose. What are the major effects? 
How many dB difference? How many minus temperature degree difference? Because remember in random media, you have to do a lot of averaging, right? So after all this averaging, you have to ask yourself, how much difference <laughs> between this very intensive approach and the usual simplistic approach? Of course, to do a full wave, including everything background, is a huge major challenge. But I think that you have to, we have to think about uh, the bottom line, how much difference after you do all these very intensive computations. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Professor. The last question is like, uh, did you did you consider the dielectric constant of the trees? The stem has a different dielectric, const dielectric constant than the uh, leaves. So did yes, you, you, can, you consider can that, yeah, those? Basically. So basically, when you, uh, after we do it together, we can have a, because it, it creates for the corns, it takes about 10 or 20 minutes on the commercial server to get one corn. So it's, it's very easy to generate a library. For, for cons, okay? Uh, we can do hundreds, <laughs> library of hundred cons of T-matrix. And trees, it take more time, but you can also do, you can have different type of trees, right? I can, I'm sure we can do uh, 20 or 30 type of trees, right? I can put your library, yeah. yeah. Thank you, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, Leung, there is a, a question uh, in the chat uh, from uh, Arvind. Thank I you, can, thank you very much, Professor. Can you see the chat? I cannot read the chat. Can you? Can you? Can you read the question to me from the chat? Uh, yes, you mentioned the the, the the question is you mentioned that the HM agreement with the full wave Maxwell equation simulation agree well for the maximum intensity, uh, but not necessarily for the nulls. Could yeah, you? The, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, could you tell? It's hard to match because, because you know the zero, right? Because if you look at amplitude, it really matches very well throughout, except you are, you are minus 30 dB, right? Because the zeros, right, as you said, zeros are subject to perturbations. Right? How can you get exactly zero, right? <laughs> so so, you, so I, I, we don't worry about this maximum because if you look at back, back speckle, way the back scale, you have a zero, right? I mean, you just average it out, right? Yeah. I, don't, I don't think that even when you do commercial software, I'm sure if you run finite element versus fast multiple method, they will be different. As a matter of fact, in the future, we can show the differences between HFS and vehicle. They do not agree either. <laughs> if you do two independent commercial software of finite element and integral equation, I don't think they, they actually, our agreement may be better. <laughs> we haven't done that yet because they, they don't want to match. Everybody knows that, yeah. If they are between 95% comparison, they will say it is agree very well <laughs> between fast element and fast multiple, yeah. And, and, and MOM, yeah. Questions, yeah. Hi, okay. Professor yeah. Chang. Mm. Sorry. Mm. Please go uh, ahead. Okay, thank you. Hi, Professor Chang. Uh, uh, excellent uh, presentation, also a very impressive work. I'm just wondering from the uh, general community of GRSS, how can we uh, leverage your, the model that you have developed uh, and use it? In other words, we may not know the details of the modeling, but suppose someone to do an uh, interpretation of measurement from various uh, sensors, how can uh, uh, GRSS members use what you have developed so far? Uh, do you think about preparing something that can be readily used at this stage in time? I know that the model will be keep developing, but can we, uh, for general GRSS uh, membership, can we use them? Thanks. Yeah, that's like our, our goal is to be look up table. But, uh, but, the, 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 but we are very busy because uh, as you said, this method is very intensive. You have to be very good in the uh, theory. <laughs> so mm -hmm. still, they take a lot of time to make sure that they can understand the technique and do it correctly. That's very important for students. So at this moment, I have only uh, one, one, two students, one student working, John working on this. And we are very busy doing the extended mission, working up to the trees of 20 meters, right? He's very, very busy trying to do the snap mission of 20 meter trees. And the other three is trying to include the intelligent waves. So basically we are sort of lack of manpower, but to, to make it useful for GRS community, we have the software, we can do it because uh, we can do basically props all the way to LS and C bank. We just need the manpower to do it, right? And then to, to, to be useful for the community, we will prepare all the payables. But I, we cannot promise much because uh, the, the human resources limited. Not that you can have, you cannot get a lot of students, but 
unless you they still know the EM very well, <laughs> they cannot do it correctly. It's even more problematic. The, the solar table will forthcoming, but not may not be that fast because we are very busy trying to do this map extended mission of trying to move up to 20 meter or 25 meter tall trees. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, there is another question on the chat uh, from uh, Yan Yuan. Uh, do those methods also include the phase information in outputs? Yes, yes, because the, the phase three model is a complex amplitude. So the, we can have the complex amplitude, but because particularly for the P-band with atometry, there is interest to look at the, with, uh, the phase in order to uh, retrieve the slow water equivalent. Yeah, it is. And actually, let back in our next P-band paper, uh, we will input a phase. Uh, the P-band paper just submitted for the for what we show, but then our student is working on the working on the, the phase. That's why he's very busy. He's doing P-band trees and L-band trees <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I have also another question. Uh, you have shown that the uh, radial transfer is uh, overestimating the attenuation. Mm -hmm. um, if I understood correctly, a main uh, uh, reason uh, was related to uh, the cover fraction uh, of the yes. vegetation. Yeah. 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 Uh, do you think, since the most people may already have uh, uh, radio transfer uh, question solution at hand uh, because there are several mm -hmm. software and groups uh, that have mm -hmm. developed that software. Uh, do you think that uh, it could be possible uh, to, let's say, in some way modify the uh, radio transfer equation method uh, to get the correct results? Uh, for instance, introducing some. Uh, uh, for instance, cover fraction. I don't know, it is difficult uh, to account for the fully polarimetric uh, behavior uh, doing this, but do you think that uh, there is a way to, to get a better result from a radio transfer equation uh, solution? I, I think so, because uh, as you said, because a lot of things, that's why we want to do very a lot of simulations, right? I, want, I don't want to just say period answer is totally not good, but because as I said, because we need to have more cases, right? So we have only, with the hybrid method, we were able, after a few years, we were able to generate a limited number of cases. So a fast hybrid method, we want to generate many cases. And then you can compare and get the trend because a lot of people can do a lot of, once you get the, all the data, <laughs> you can do machine learning and make the correction. I think you, that the idea is to have a lot of results that you can systematically study. But on the other hand, it's a sort of difficult because if you look at the gap, right? The gap can be small, say a few centimeters. But then the gap, how much you, the gap effect depends on the frequency, right? So a gap uh, at X band, which is one centimeter, uh, three centimeter wavelength is a gap, but it's not a gap <laughs> in L band, right? So the, the gap effect is wavelength dependent. And that is why it is not easy to just make a fudge factor. But on the hand, if you have a, we have a lot of simulation results, you can try to make a systematic study to make a correction, yeah. Okay, yes, yes, because uh, we just uh, did some comparison using polarimetric data between uh, gravitatory transfer and uh, polarimetric decomposition uh, and uh, the radio transfer was uh, uh, estimating a very big uh, um, attenuation. Instead, yeah. the polarimetric decomposition from the data uh, were estimating uh, uh, a, a quite limited attenuation of the uh, surface scattering uh, uh, when in, in presence of vegetation. So we, we get different, uh, uh, let's say, results from uh, polarimetric decomposition and uh, uh, radio transfer. So uh, this is why I'm interested in this. Yeah, in I, this I echo your thought. The reason okay. that, we, that we want to move to this full wave is because the smart radar failed. And then yeah. we use the C-band, right? The C-band uh, dentino data. And once you put in C-band, wow, that attention is tremendous. <laughs> That's why the, the motivation for the work in 2017 is that we, as smart radar failed, we moved to C-band and the attention is so tremendous 
That's why we engage on this full wave. And then for C band, the transmission is three times more. Yeah? That's, that's why actually the L band may be 50% or you know, two times, but for C band, it can be as big as three times. But we don't have time to go into all this uh, last table of table, but, but with the FHM, we are ready to do a lookup table and make comparison, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there is another question in the chat. Uh, the tidy line at the scatters, uh, for instance, uh, wheat plants were used for simulations. Were there any resonances in this configuration? What, uh, uh, what would the, the simulation results be if there were random distributed scatterers? So uh, the question I, I understood was about the presence of resonance when there are these alignments of plants. That's, so. that's also interesting because if you look at, uh, uh, because if you have branches, right, they, you can make it all different in length. Uh, we can have a one probability distribution of the length and radius, then you can have uh, uh, the minimize some sort of resonant effect because the branches are of different length. Uh, for the tree, as some, if you have one trunk with a fixed radius, there will be some resonance. And we have looked at uh, the different kind of, basically you can, there's a model, uh, a, a circular long cylinder, you can run the model and look at different resonances. We have not dealt with those uh, effects at this moment because we think that if there's a resonance, maybe due to trunk, but probably not due to the branches because the branches are different radii and, and length. Because they have, we have 100 branches, 18. If you look at a tree, primary branches, they may be 50 or 100, and then secondary branches may be you know, a few hundred. So the chance of resonance is, is low because it's average out. But if you have one single trunk, uh, we need to look at the resonance effect, at what, at what radius we have a resonance. But we just too busy to, <laughs> to look into all this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so any other question or comment? Uh, okay, we have taken more than one hour of uh, long time. So if there are not other questions, uh, I would ask, I would like to thank about Leung for this very interesting uh, uh, presentation. The presentation uh, in some time it will be available also on YouTube. Uh, so you can uh, re review again uh, what Leon said. Um, yes, there, are, there is a question. Can we please have a summary? Do you, do you mean, uh, uh, Ahmad, uh, do you mean a summary of the presentation or what else? Uh, Okay, a summary of the presentation, I mean that uh, uh, Leung provided summary in the last uh, uh, slide, that is uh, uh, the slide that is now on the screen. So Leung, if you want just very briefly uh, to summarize uh, uh, the main topic, uh, also yeah. after this uh, discussion probably, um, now you have uh, an idea of what are the, the topic that are were more uh, uh, interest for the audience. Uh, and do you want to comment? Yeah, the dance media scanning is also very interesting because they are right now a, a plan of using P-band, X-band, uh, and KU-band to infer zero water equivalent. And we also look at C-band cross pole. Love soft surface scattering, the various spectrum, and up, go up to higher frequency, because if you want to use X and KU band for so volume scattering, you need to treat the rough surface below, which the KH is close to 25. But in the forest, it's only a beginning, right? Because you are so busy there. <laughs> because long time ago, student people that are always too tough when you look at vegetation. And there's so many trees, so many cones. And as I said earlier, multiple scattering of waves never finish because nature is so complicated, right? Uh, and, 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 and with all these back sounds, it's hard. So I encourage the young people to continue to look at all the, but again, the most important thing is uh, what are the major difference, right? As, as the model said, right? For the C band, the penetration attention is very high uh, for radio transfer. But the major difference is that once you have the gap, you have much less attenuation, that's very important. And then we want to look up, look up table for crops very soon. If we have the with human resources <laughs> and human resources they can do the work. And for us, we will keep on working up for L-band, 
and we want to do 25 meters. As a matter of fact, in Amazon, it can be 40 meters tall, the trees, yeah, okay. Okay, so I think that the final summary and conclusion could be what you said, Leung, the nature is very complicated and we have to work very hard <laughs> to understand. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Not like okay. my pencil, you can finish any time, but the geometry is too complicated, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so if there are not other questions, uh, I will close this webinar now. Thanks again to uh, Le to Leung for uh, being uh, available for uh, to give this lesson, and uh, see you uh, for the next uh, webinar, uh, probably one two months. Okay, thank everybody for attending. Thank you very much, thank thank you, thank, and thank you to Leung. Thank Bye. you, Professor Tsang. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.